everyone. It's so good to see you. I'm so excited to share with you these new artworks. Um, it's great to see each and every one of you. I love seeing your beautiful faces here. Um, I know all of you guys, so I'm so happy you made time in your schedule to, um, to attend this virtual exhibit. Now, um, I wish this was a real exhibit, but um, you know, with COVID and everything, it was difficult to plan a physical art exhibition uh, because of obvious reasons. Um, now I think we could plan something um, that's more in person, but it was difficult to uh, plan ahead three months ago. So we're just doing the virtual, but the plus for this is that wherever you are in the world, um, you get to see this exhibition. And that is something I'm really grateful for. And I think is really cool with technology. So thank you guys all so much for being here. And um, yes, I can't wait to share with you everything that I've been uh, working on. Now, um, yes, a little bit about the schedule for the exhibition. So first I'll be just talking a little bit about my inspiration and ideas behind the show. Um, and, uh, and then we're going to, I'm going to show you the virtual gallery and we're going to look at every piece. And I'm just gonna say um, a short bit about the inspiration behind every piece. And if at any point during this exhibition, you have questions about the way that I made something, you know, the models I used, the, um, you know, the techniques that I used or anything at all, please feel free to put that in the chat. Um, I, I would be super happy to answer any of your questions. So, um, so yeah, please, you know, send it in the chat. You can send it to everyone. Um, so everyone can see your question and I'll be looking at those questions um, more towards the end. And then we'll go over all the questions and um, yeah, it'll be awesome. I'm a little bit nervous because of technology. <laughs> I never know if it's gonna work or not, but, um, but it's working so far. So that's awesome. Um, all right, so. Another thing about this exhibition is, it is a benefit exhibition. Um, if anybody knows me, you know that I am very passionate about nature, being out in the wildlife, um, going for walks in the woods. If you saw the little documentary I made about wild love, um, a lot of it is so inspired by the natural world. And so um, I'm very proud to be partnering with a fabulous organization called One Tree Planted to make this benefit exhibition um, something that will hopefully, we'll be able to plant hundreds of new trees in the Amazon rainforest where it's been damaged by the raging forest fires in recent times. And you'll see in each one of my pieces um, in my shop that different works will correspond with a different number of trees being planted depending on their cost. And um, you know, if you purchase the piece, then you will get a certificate from the organization with the number of trees that you will have planted. So I think that's really cool and very tangible. And um, yeah, I was just really excited about that because I love trees. Uh, my family jokes that all of my paintings are of girls and trees. And I tell them about a new painting and they say, is it a girl with a tree? And I say, yes, it is. <laughs> um, so yes, uh, so yeah. Basically One Tree Planted, I think is a really great fit. Um, and I'm really excited to make a difference in the world this way. And I know that you are too. I know you guys are awesome. So as an artist, the idea behind this work has always been full of scintillating possibility. So as I develop as an artist and continue to create work, one word stays with me through all the years that I think describes my work very well, and that is enchanted. So I strive to create a mood of enchantment and a, with a lively imaginative feel that makes you feel like all is right with the world. So in this exhibition, I do feel that I have achieved this more than in my past works. I'm really proud of what I've created um, over the past year. So this body of work was so much fun to, to make and I really gave myself permission to follow my whims and fancies an experiment with different color combinations, landscapes, and fantasy figurines that brought me into another world. And especially um, with COVID and the lockdown and everything, it really gave me such a wonderful escape. Um, as many of you know, 
um, the world has not been quite so uh, so fun and to step into kind of your own world. And, you know, it just gave me such a, it gave me a real direction and a purpose during these long winter months that I was creating all these, um, these paintings. So they do have a bit of escapism to them, but I don't think that's a bad thing. I think, I think art can do that and it's, it's a healthy thing. So um, I really gave my, myself permission to follow my whims and fancies and experiment with different color combos, landscapes and fantasy figures. And it really brought me to another world. So through today's exhibition, I hope to lift the veil in this magical and enchanted world and bring you with me into this candy colored universe of dreams and delights. So femininity and the female form, um, they've definitely played a big part in my work within this collection. And I see a lot of similarities between the idea of mother nature and the female figure. And I also relate um, that it's, it's fashion, like how nature changes her outfits every season and looks completely different. Um, so like the bowers of roses in a garden or how nature decorates herself for the spring. And likewise, a woman adorns herself as she goes out into the world. We change our fashion as we wish to reflect ourselves to the world. Likewise, nature, nature changes her fashions through flowers, greenery, and even wildlife. Nature also goes through different cycles in her year and even throughout the centuries. Likewise, women go through cycles of our own, and this is reflected in our similarity to mother nature. This exhibition also includes animals, which is something that I have not included as much before, but I'm really excited to explore. Uh, I am fascinated with the idea of the spirit animal, which is an ancient idea that the spirit resides outside the body or is found in a counterpart of an animal that the person resonates with. So I included various animal companions to the ladies in this candy colored wilderness that I'm depicting and even included a few centuresses, uh, centuresses, I don't know, I may have just made that up, but centaur women. Uh, which is the ultimate fusion of a person and an animal, and also brings to mind that we have animal within us as, as mammals. We are, you know, we have all the functions of an animal and not to reject that, but to honor that. So, and I've also included other sources of inspiration from this uh, body of work, like Disney's Fantasia. Do you guys remember that? Um, I, I'm obsessed with that, the original Fantasia. I could watch it forever. Um, various fairy tales like The White Deer and Little Red Riding Hood, and Alice in Wonderland. So the narratives of these paintings are reflected loosely in the imagery, and tying this all together is the idea of the princess finding her own way, choosing actively the path of her destiny. And I'm gonna, I discovered something um, this, this winter that I think really um, pinpointed exactly what I'm trying to do with my art. So my work in this show is about the feminine protagonist creating her own personal mythology and meaning. In life, our choices help us discover who we are and who we are going to be. And it is through this process of self-discovery that we begin to know ourselves. Through using the symbology and tropes found within fairy tales, I explore the concept of the Virgin's Promise, the process of self-discovery that the heroine faces that forces her to turn inwards and to find her own identity making choices all her own against prevailing odds. It is through strengthening her own sense of self and ownership of her, over her destiny that the protagonist creates the ability to improve the life of her own and the lives of those within her kingdom. Other concepts that relate to this body of work are the reflection of nature mirroring the feminine biology and spirit, which we talked about, the use of costuming and fashion to create identity and animal symbology. So <clears throat> you may be wondering what the Virgin's Promise is. Um, it's not what it sounds like. <laughs> the Virgin's Promise concept is a new story archetype expounded on in the book written by Kim Hudson that serves as a counterpart to the story structure of the hero's journey. Uh, most people who have um, who like reading or writing or, um, or literature, you're familiar with the story structure of the hero's journey. It's a very popular way of breaking down mythology and certain stories. Um, so, but the hero's journey does not fit with, with many 
uh, fairy tales or um, with many stories that deal with women. And the Virgin's Promise concept demystifies the complexities of archetypes and clearly outlines the steps of a virgin's journey to realize her dream. Um, the Virgin's Promise describes structural beats that feel incredibly familiar, but have not been illustrated in any other screenwriting book. It explores the yin and yang of the virgin and the hero as they journey to embrace their power as individuals. Although both archetypes are about bravery and a kind of coming of age, the virgin is different from the hero in that her story is one of self-actualization and self-discovery and a strengthening of her autonomy, while the hero's journey is about conquering the outside world. And as soon as I learned about this concept, I knew that this is what I have been painting about my whole life, pretty much. So examples of the Virgin's Promise archetype in literature are classics such as Jane Eyre, um, Elizabeth Bennett from Pride and Prejudice, Little Women, The Emily of New Moon Trilogy by Ellen Montgomery, which is like my favorite fiction stuff ever. And a lot of fairy tales like Red Riding Hood, Cinderella, Beauty and the Beast, um, so the protagonist, um, she does not face outright villains, but often faces difficult circumstances that demand that she transcend who she currently is to become more empowered and a, a masterful version of herself. Um, so for instance, um, so for Beauty and the Beast, uh, let's say when her, um, she has to overcome her own fear of the beast to go save her father. So in that way, it's, it's um, she's overcoming these things herself. Likewise, the um, Elizabeth Bennett from Pride and Prejudice, she has to overcome her own feelings and, and grow. Um, in Little Women, um, Jo March, she has to, um, she has to individuate and, and um, believe in herself enough to publish these books. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, Cinderella, Cinderella, that's a really good one. She has to, um, she also has to believe in herself enough to know that she, um, she's worth more than being the servant girl of these um, people who treat her terribly. And she has to defy them and decide that her life is going to be different. Um, so in this way, these are story structures that describe the idea of the Virgin's Promise. And I, I just knew this is exactly what I've been painting my whole life. <laughs> um, so I was really excited to find that out as I was reading and researching this, this winter. And so um, I imagine uh, that each one of the women that I depict in my art is going through this transformation and inner growth. So um, that is kind of the background for this. And are there any questions so far? If there are, you can just check, you know, type them right into the chat. So good to see you all. All right. And now I am going to take you into the exhibition. And I'm going to share my screen. There we go. All right. All right. Um, all right, so this, the screen is shared. Um, if you can see this, if you could just put a one in the chat, if you can see this, um, it should say enter a collection of new paintings. Um, I just wanna make sure that you guys can see it. Okay, great. All right, wonderful. Okay, so here is the virtual show. It's a collection of new paintings depicting the wildness and romance of nature present all around us and within us. Unexpected colors, oversized flowers and magical otherworldly landscapes are mixed with classically inspired figures um, playing their part like an actress on set. This new body of work by Jessica Libor, that's me, explore, explores the ideas of the heroine as she chooses her own destiny. Here we go. Yes, it's pink. So why not? All right. I'm gonna hide the people here. Okay. All right, so welcome to Wild Love. Um, you can just imagine that you're walking into this gallery and I'm showing you this one by one, but we're going to start over here at this far end. 
and I will bring you over here. Um, this piece is called the Shepherdess, and um, it is oil and 12 karat white gold on cradled panel, 24 by 18 inches. And a mysterious shepherdess rules the pastoral landscape with her devoted wolf companion in this fairy tale. Inspired by the idea of the taming of the ego, and also inspired by the Flemish landscape masters. Um, so this piece, it's like one of my favorite pieces I've ever made. <laughs> There's just something about it that really came together very easily for me and very, it just really flowed. If you're an artist, I'm sure you resonate with the idea of, um, you know, uh, something really flowing. Um, versus something that you struggle with. And this piece just, it flowed so well and I loved working on it. And um, I don't know her story, but I think that she is an interesting character and um, she has her, her wolf companion there. And there's some little sheep dotting the distance and there's the kingdom over here. Maybe she's like the lost princess who was displaced and they're about to like find her or something. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a very magical, fun painting that I had fun with. It does not have a frame. Um, it does not really need a frame. Um, it, it's, it's cradled on very thick um, panel. Um, you'll see in, my, uh, in the listings in my website, there's many more detail shots of what that looks like. Um, it's more of like a modern way of presenting it. Um, and this is white gold. So it's 12 karat gold up here, um, white gold, and it's sealed. Um, I like using that instead of silver leaf because it does not tarnish. Um, sometimes using silver leaf can, um, um, the silver leaf can just tarnish and change a little bit, but this stays nice and bright and very reflective. All right, so that is the shepherdess. All right, and so next we have the white deer. So this is um, this is oil and 24 karat gold. Um, so you see the 24 karat gold in her, um, in her crown all throughout her dress, as well as this sunburst over the white deer. And this is inspired um, by the fairy tale called the white deer, very loosely inspired, um, which has within it the idea of this servant girl and this princess and like um, this white deer and um, trading places. And it's just a very interesting, um, it, I, I found it an, a very enchanting um, literary idea. And I was picturing the different characters and um, I came up with this like really, really soft um, enchanted landscape idea. And I just think it's it's some, something that's very magical feeling and someplace I'd wanna go. Um, so this is the moment where she discovers the white deer and they're wondering who they're going to be to each other in this story and what is the meaning of the white deer. So yeah, and then this also comes with a frame. So it comes with a gilded gold frame. And again, in my, um, in, in my website links, um, you will see all the details for that. There's many more pictures of that. And if you if you want to go through this on your own as well, um, there will be it'll be on my website. But when you click up here to media, it'll link you exactly to the piece, um, to that exact piece that you can purchase. So you can you can take it'll take you right there. Um, so this piece was a lot of fun. So it's 24 by 36. That's two feet by three feet. So it's one of the bigger pieces in the show. Um, but yeah, that is the white deer. All right, next we have wild things. So this piece is oil and white gold um, as well. You can see the white gold shining up here in the tree, as well as these um, tree trunks back here. So um, a young lady steps forward, holding her parasol over her while engaging the viewer in a direct gaze. Is she the explorer in this world or the queen of this strange domain? Beside her crouches a leopard-like domestic cat, which has symbolic roots in the ancient idea of the soul being externalized from the body in an animal form, 
The landscape is pastel and candy colored, like the fantastic vision from a dream. The color captures the sense of discovery in the uninitiated youth, when something new, exotic, exciting, and unfamiliar is around every corner waiting to be discovered. It is also a metaphor for the heroine's journey, um, the heroine's discovery of herself and her burgeoning sense of autonomy. And I also wanna say that I thought about what it would look like if there was like some enchanted um, grove on the moon. Like if you went to the moon and everything was beautiful and silvery and like, uh, what would that look like? So that, that kind of gave me some um, inspiration. I do like to read sci-fi. So um, <clears throat> I love reading about, you know, the possibility of other planets or um, what may exist that we do not know of. So I did think of, you know, she's like on a, maybe on another planet, maybe like a parallel universe. Um, this was just a very fun and imaginative one to do. All right, so this one is called Rainbow Bridge. So this is pastel on archival Bristol paper, and this is 11 by 14 inches. So it's one of the smaller pieces. And it just makes me really happy when I look at it. It makes me feel like I'm stepping into fairyland. And yes, Rainbow Bridge invites you into a magical moment of reflection and hope with the double rainbow there. And, um, and it's reflected in the pond below with the lily pads there. And I just love the different play of textures. And I imagine that there's like a little gnome who might live under that bridge and, um, I don't know, I just, it just makes me happy and I wanna go there. So that is Rainbow Bridge. All right, this is Centaurus One. So this is ink and 23 karat gold leaf and colored pencil on paper. It's 11 by 14 inches. And the, the Centaurus One and Centaurus Two pieces, cause they are companion pieces. And um, there's one, another one that's gonna be similar. Um, they are informed by fantasy and nostalgia and bring to mind the original Fantasia film. Um, there's a sequence there and it is paired with, um, hold on, I'll tell you what it's paired with. Symphony number no. six in F major by Beethoven. And um, it's, the, it's the part of Fantasia that has all the little like centaurs like playing around and like sliding down rainbows and stuff. And I just love it. I, I just love it so much. <laughs> There's something about like the original Disney stuff like Sleeping Beauty and Fantasia and all those really early ones that I just really love. Um, they have a charm to them and such like an imagination. And you can tell that they're like hand drawn, which I really love. Um, but this was kind of inspired by that. Of course, I added all my own flair um, I made the centaur grow up a bit and um, yeah, I made it a little more fine arty, um, but this is centaurus one. So gold leaf, she has like little gold leaf uh, flowers in her hair and there's flowers down here. All right, but one of the, um, one of the things that I love in those, uh, in, in that scene in particular is the way that they execute the trees. So the trees are all, they, they're like this canopy um, that's very defined. And so like there's the inside that's like all shadowy and then there's like the outside. And I thought that that was really, really interesting and cool and I wanted to do that. All right, so next we have Sweet Violets. So this is pastel on toned paper, 24 by 18 inches. A young lady stands by the banks of a river holding floral treasures as spring zephyrs toss her gown. And I was actually really inspired by Degas, um, Edgar Degas, who was the one who painted and drew all those ballerinas back in the Impressionist times. Um, he did such beautiful drawings that were so confident and so full of life. And they were just so beautiful. And his color combinations were so interesting that I wanted to try to mimic some of his um, color combinations and the way that he did his pastels. So that's what I was doing with this piece. Um, I used my own reference material. Um, and just so you guys know, I do hire all my own models. 
um, if I can get them in person, which um, most of these are from, from people in person that I have, um, I do their hair, I dress them in like some of my vintage collection of clothing. Um, I do all of the photo shoots of them. I take them around Philadelphia. There's some really beautiful gardens in and around Philadelphia and pose them and work from those reference photos. Um, but if I can't get people in person, like this year was difficult, um, then I'll work from photos that, you know, we work with together or that they get me. Um, so, so that's typically how I work. I do work from life, um, but because of the nature of my work, um, most of the people are set outside, natural lighting. It's just difficult to have them pose for like 10 hours for you to paint outside. Um, so that's why I mostly use photographs in my reference. But anyway, so this was inspired by Degas and, um, and yeah, so 18 by 24. And I, so I toned this entire background, this like pinky peach color and, um, and then worked on top of it, so. Um, thank you so much. Um, I'm just reading your um, comments here, but I'll save those. Okay, so um, Centaurus 2. This is the one that kind of goes with Centaurus 1, but, you know, it won't make me mad if they're split up. <laughs> um, but so this is Centaurus 2, ink, colored pencil, and 23 karat gold leaf on paper. And um, she's just, you know, laying down and... Um, She's, she's got a whole bunch more flowers that she's gathered up. And yeah, so this is just the companion to the other one. So the way that I did this was I actually drew these first. So I drew in colored pencil um, freehand. Um, and then just, uh, and then afterwards, after I was happy with the drawing, then I went in with the ink and, um, and did like a wash over the entire thing, which gets these really great, bleeds over here and um and and then went over the ink a couple times um to to get these darker colors and then i do a little bit of white chalk as well to get these highlights in the hair and there's gold leaf in this one as well all right so next we have golden girl so golden girl is watercolor, acrylic, and 23 karat gold on Bristol paper. A beautiful young lady in a green and golden dress is crowned with golden sunflowers and sits by a golden stream. And so this is real gold, 24 karat gold, or 23 karat, I'm sorry. So the carats are interesting. The, the less carats there are, the lighter the gold will be. So if you want like a really deep, like almost orangey gold, then it's gonna be 24 karat. Um, and then you, it gets lighter as there are less carrots. So 23 is really nice. It's not like too orangey. It's like a, a really pretty deep yellow. And so that's what I used in this. And I love cherry blossoms. I know a lot of you guys do as well. We have such beautiful cherry blossom season here in Philadelphia. And so um, I wanted to capture the cherry blossom trees as well. Okay, so this is um, this is called Bower. Thank you so much, guys. You're so um, you're so kind. Thank you. So this is called Bower, and this is a graphite on pastel paper um, that I have that I painstakingly did. Um, if you look at it up close, it's hard to tell. It's just hard to tell in person, but um, there's just so much detail in this piece. It's very, very precise and very um, meticulously done because um, all I used was graphite and created this um, created this piece with that. I spent a lot of time trying to get the uh, the detail in the flowers here and um, and in her face and body. Um, but this is a young lady reclines in a bower of florals and thickets surrounded by the glamour of nature. And this piece, I think, really. Um, exemplifies the idea of um, women reflecting nature because um, she really is reflecting this like environment around her in this piece. Um, so yeah. All right, so this is an interesting piece. 
Um, now the original for this has already sold, but um, this is a, a limited edition print um, and this is called Fragonard's Garden. And this piece um, was commissioned for me to do on a $1 bill. So, um, so yeah, I, I basically um, gessoed parts of the $1 bill. So you can see if you turn over the $1 bill and there, of course there's different, there's different designs of the $1 bill. If you get one that's like before 1980, it's gonna like, it's gonna look slightly different. I liked the older designs cause they were more like Victorian and intricate and everything. So um, this is the back of a $1 bill. Um, and so what I did was I gessoed some of the sides here um, around it, but I left these, um, these little frames here and um, like this, like inside this was like the, uh, the pyramid and I painted over the one and I don't know what's over here. I forget, but um, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, yeah. And then these are butterfly wings and this is oil paint. So, and I just like put in, I just like put in everything I like, you know, like I want to be on that swing, you know, swinging in that garden and then like, you know, seeing this, this beautiful like Monet-esque landscape over here and this, um, this beautiful sunset over here. So yeah, this is just, this is just a really fun and dreamy piece. Um, very fantastic, very imaginative and very feminine and fun. And the, um, I like how the nature and the tree is just kind of spilling out of everything and kind of taking over um, capitalism. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, this is, this is a fun piece. All right, so this is called Epiphany and this is oil and 23 karat gold on panel, 20 inches by 16 inches. Um, and it's inspired by traditional Annunciation paintings. And, um, you know, the Annunciation paintings of, um, of Mary as she, she's told by the angel that she's, you know, the mother of God. Um, I just always found those paintings so beautiful and so pure and um, inspiring and just, just gorgeous. And I wanted to do something that kind of had the feeling of an Annunciation painting, even though it's not like overtly religious. Um, so yeah, I just think of it as her having a burst of revelation, inspiration, or clarity. And um, I like how the, the light is kind of coming in behind her and illuminating her, um, her veil here. And um, she's carrying lilies. And uh, yeah, so that is Epiphany. And this is a gold leaf. Um, this is the tree is gold leaf right there. And so it's oil and gold leaf. And it does come with this, a golden frame. Okay, and this is called Wonderland. Now, Wonderland um, is um, inspired by actually um, Alice in Wonderland. So I was inspired by Alice in Wonderland, but I wanted to do kind of like a little bit more grown up of a version. Um, and she, I just, I did this piece of Alice who still has a kind of bluish dress on. Blue is her signature, right? And she's fallen into Wonderland, which looks very wondrous to me and has um, these huge flowers all around her. Lots of lilies. And um, I love lilies, love the way that they feel. I mean, the, the way that they smell, it's so amazing. Um, so yeah, that, that is Wonderland. And I wanted to include this beautiful cloud mass that's kind of like illuminated from within because every once in a while you see those and it's like a revelation when you see them and you see like the clouds lighting up. And um, I, just, I just love that moment and I wanted to include that beauty in this piece as well. Now, this is a limited edition print out of a hundred. And um, this is, I'm doing something different this year. So I'm doing very large prints. So I'm doing almost life-size prints of the larger paintings. So the prints that I made of these larger paintings are almost the size of the original um, because I find that a lot of the power of the piece is kind of lost when you shrink it down to a very small size. So I wanted people to be able to experience that um, in these prints. 
um, if they, you know, only one person can get the original, but um, if you want to get a print, it's more affordable and, um, you know, more people can enjoy it. So I didn't want to um, shrink the power of the pieces as much. So that is why I did that. Oh, and the original for that piece for Wonderland is available through a Bend Gallery right now. So they are the ones that have that piece right now and you can purchase it through them. Okay, um, but, but, but I have the limited edition prints, so. <laughs> okay, so Red Riding Hood with Lantern. So this piece is um, Red Riding Hood makes her way through the woods holding her lantern. And this is a piece that is watercolor and ink. And like I said before about the archetypes and the Virgin's Promise, I wanted to do at least one like overt um, fairy tale. And so this is Red Riding Hood and she is making her way. Yeah, and this is watercolor and ink on archival Bristol paper. And all of these that need to be framed are framed and all the details are, um, like the detail shots and everything, they're on my website. All right, so this is a fun one. This is really large. Um, so this is, um, yeah, 72 inches high and 42 inches wide. So it's um, six foot high and, and um, a little bit over three feet wide. And this is called Blind Love. And um, again, we have the female in nature, um, but I, I kind of like the idea of Lady Justice and, um, and that, that um, aesthetic of her with the blindfold. And I wanted to do that with, um, with one of my pieces. So this is blind love with the idea that love is blind um, or that we are blind to the faults of our beloved. And so that is this piece. And this is all um, charcoal on archival paper, archival drawing paper. Um, now this one is not framed um, because a frame for this would be massive and then shipping it would be a nightmare but um, it, it uh, ships rolled up in a tube so that whoever gets it, um, you can decide how to frame it. And then um, you won't have to pay the shipping, which is awesome. So that is Blind Love. And then this is our last piece. So this piece is called Attainment and it is a fantasy garden, um, which is populated by figures um, now this takes inspiration from the Garden of Eden, as well as the Rococo Pleasure Gardens. Um, so I spent some time in France a couple of years ago, and I loved the, um, the Garden of Versailles it was just so beautiful. It really is just a bucolic escape from reality. It's so gorgeous. And the vistas that you see from the top of the palace down as you look down, um, it's like incredible. You're like, is this real? Um, and they just, and they, they designed all that and they made all that before any modern innovations, which I think is really incredible. So this kind of insp is inspired by those gardens. And um, so it's up to you to figure out what's going on in this painting. I won't spoil it for you, but you can probably figure it out. Um, Thank you so much. You know, like the use of various shades of green. And um, Ian says, beautiful tree, love all the details. Thank you guys. All right. So that is, that is the show. Um, oops. Oh, that was the full screen. Okay. I guess I should have done that a while ago. <laughs> Sorry guys. Okay. How do I get out of here? There we go. All right, so that is Wild Love. So now I would like to open it up to any questions. Does anybody have any questions about the way that I make these, the ideas, anything comes from being an artist, anything? I love these roses. These are from my garden. I picked them today. They're so pretty. These are my favorite, these light pink. All right, I'm gonna scroll up and see what you guys have said here.
And just so you, just to remind you guys, um, for those of you who came in while I was um, presenting, so um, if you decide to buy any of these pieces today, you do get, um, you get to be planting basically, um, it's one, 12, 40 or a hundred trees, depending on the price of the work um, will be planted as you purchase each piece. So, and all the details for that are in um, the links. Um, so, um, so yeah, you're going to be doing a lot of good by purchasing these. And also because you guys showed up today and you actually are here and you're watching and everything, um, you guys know you get a, uh, you get your special discount, which is the most that these pieces will ever be discounted. And, um, and that expires at midnight tonight. So just for you guys to know that, that, um, that discount expires at midnight tonight. Um, and if you scroll all the way up to the top of the chat, you'll see all the details for that. Um, so just wanna make sure everybody saw that. At the very top, there's all the details. Um, so let's see, I've got a couple questions here. Do you make any Gothic art? I see a lot of pastels and they're gorgeous, but wondering if you go into the dark side. Um, yes, absolutely. I actually have a lot of dark work from, um, from earlier in my career. Um, it's interesting. <laughs> You're, I think that the, the artwork definitely reflects the artist. I think that I was in kind of like a darker place and um, and so I was making kind of this darker artwork. Um, and I'm just gonna be really honest with you. I started learning about like mental health and you know, um, thinking positively and like taking care of yourself and stuff like that. And my work actually started changing dramatically. So um, I find my work right now is it's happier. It's um, more, more lighthearted. I think it's more playful. I want to step into that world more. It's less about catharsis um, and more about optimism and hope now. Um, but absolutely, I have definitely explored the dark side um, for sure. Um, but it's inter and I don't I don't think that there's anything wrong with it. Um, I think that for me, um, I like dwelling in this world and. I wanted to invite you guys into this world with me, um, and I find it I find it more happy and more um, more more like where I would like to exist. And uh, it's interesting how you know doing shadow work on yourself and finding out more about mental health it can make changes that you do not actually anticipate, and um, you know through your healing. So, all right, let's see what else. Um, okay. Beautiful show, you put a lot of work into each painting. They are very lyrical and feel like you are taking us on a journey through the fantasy worlds that you read and dream about. Yes, that is, that's exactly it. I'm so happy that you see that as well. Um, okay, I was intrigued when you mentioned the gold for the paintings. So is this a gold dust that was mixed into the materials? It sounds like a fascinating way to repurpose a metal. Um, no, I do not use gold dust, actually. Um, some people do use gold dust. I use actually um, very thin sheets of um, beaten gold. So they it's called patent gold leaf. And they come in these booklets. And you have to buy the booklets and um, you have to I do, the way that I typically do it is I'll sketch out the idea for the painting on the canvas, or I like to work on panel because it's more smooth. Um, so, I'll, and then I'll start to paint. I'll do a very thin layer with, um, with lavender spike oil, which is a non-toxic solvent. Um, and it's basically an essential oil. It's actually what the old masters used. And it's, it's much better for your health than turpentine. So I start with that. I do like a very pale layer of color and that dries almost immediately. It dries like within an hour. And so at that point, I'll know exactly where I want to put the gold and silver leaf. And um, the way that you apply that is you have to paint it on with, um, 
with glue, a specialty glue that you paint on, and then you apply um, thin sheets of the gold or silver, and, um, and then you have to seal it with a sealer. And, uh, and then I, I go over that, and you can see up close in some of my paintings the way that I, I layer the paint around the gold and silver leaf. Um, or sometimes, sometimes if I end up covering it or something and I want to put it in again, you can always put in more gold or silver leaf afterwards. But I like to put in the gold and silver leaf early on because there's a tendency for the gold and silver leaf to stick to the oil paint if you put it on too late because um, the oil paint stays tacky for several weeks. Um, so, so yeah, if you put on the thick oil paint first and then try to gild, um, those sheets end up sticking to the oil paint. So it's definitely like, it's an alchemical process. It's definitely a way to, um, yeah, it's definitely a process. It's kind of like cooking. You got to do one thing first and then the next thing. So, okay. Um, got a couple more questions here. Do you find yourself traveling a lot to find the right natural environments to match your imagination? Um, well, this year I really didn't travel much. <laughs> I'm sure none of us really did. But uh, before that, yeah, I really like traveling. I like going to different places. Um, yeah, France definitely stands out as something that's like, France feels very otherworldly. Even though I was just there as a tourist, you know, it's, it feels very otherworldly. Um, I also studied in Florence at the Florence Academy of Art for a summer, and um, that was also very dreamy. You, you don't feel like you're living your real life when you're over there. It's like very, um, it's like stepping back in time. In fact, when I was there, um, I found this etching made in like the 1600s um, of this like town square in, in Florence, Italy, and it was like a print for, for sale in a shop. And um, I found it and I stepped outside and literally it had not changed since 1600. Like nothing had changed. It, they must have very good zoning there or something. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I do, like, I do like traveling, but mostly for these, I used a lot of just from my imagination or I'll use um, you know, sources that I'll find around Philadelphia. Like for instance, this one of the girl with the parasol, wild things. Um, this is right along Kelly Drive. And this is one of the garden spots right along Kelly Drive. And, you know, of course it's totally unrecognizable because of the colors and what I've done with it. But, um, but yeah, taking the ordinary and making it extraordinary. Um, thank you, John. John likes the brighter place. Thank you. Um, let's see if there's any other questions. see. Okay, very positive energy. Aline says, amen, woman. <laughs> I'm not sure what that's in response to, but um, I'd be curious to hear what that's in response to. Um, okay, what inspired the dollar bill work? What prompted the dollar bill as a medium? So the dollar bill um, work, I was part of a show called $100 at this gallery in New York. And I did this piece for that. And then I had a, a collector who bought it and then she commissioned me to do two more. And so I did two more for her. And then, um, but that one ended up being my favorite. The Fragonard's Garden ended up being one of my favorites. So um, Donna, Wild Love is displayed at, um, at the, the um, at Era Contemporary, which is in the Mill Studios in Philadelphia. So it's, it's actually all beautifully displayed. All of these pieces are there. They are all set up just like this. I set them up just like they are in the gallery. So <clears throat> that's a good point. If anybody wants to see this in person, um, you can email me and um, I am absolutely happy to show you around in person. And um, yeah, that, that would be awesome. Um, yeah. Oh, going towards the light. Aline says, amen, going towards the light. That's so cool. Um, Ian says, I've always been impressed by dollar art. My favorite artist, Alfonso Muka, designed some back in his day. Oh, I did not know that. I love Muka though. Um, that's so cool. Amazing. So 
Before we go, I actually um, had a fun little exercise to do with you guys. I just want to hear from you. What do you think is your spirit animal? <laughs> and you can just type it in the chat. And I would love to hear what is your spirit animal? Rachel says she's an owl. And Ian says he's a red tailed hawk. Elaine says she is the eagle and the wolf. Uh, Jen says she's a llama. <laughs> I love that. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. Gigi says she's an owl. Cheryl says she's a pussycat. Carol says, I've been told I'm a squirrel and I believe it. <laughs> okay, we have a white tiger, a rat, a rabbit, a blue cardinal. Oh, that's a fun one. A horse. And we have another horse. That's amazing. All right, Steven says, um, I've always been connected with dolphins, wolves, and dogs. Gabe says he's a liger. If you mix my Chinese zodiac tiger with my lion zodiac, they become a liger. Ah, very cool. Well, um, I've I've always liked the idea of being a um, a Pegasus, like like the the horses with the wings on them. And um, I've never actually painted them yet, but um, that maybe that'll be my next painting. It's painting a like a Pegasus, so I can paint my own. I could paint myself with a spirit animal. Yes. Um, you know, it's been like, I haven't painted myself in probably like, probably like over seven years. So I think it's due. I think it's due to paint myself with my spirit animal. Cheryl says she's a poodle. Amazing. All right, guys. Well, um, <laughs> Elaine, Elaine has my, one of my first self portraits. She says, I still love your self portraits. Ah. <laughs> thank you guys oh my goodness <clears throat> so I have a little quote for the ending of today and this quote is <clears throat> by Alberto Giacometti a Italian artist and um, he was from the impressionist era and he said the object of art is not to reproduce reality but to create a reality of the same intensity. And that was my goal with Wild Love. And I really hope that you guys enjoyed it and, um, and that you felt that you could be part of this world for tonight. And um, yes, thank you guys so, so much for joining me tonight. And I will be sending you, specifically you guys who showed up um, and are registered for today's event. You guys will get an exclusive email from me um, that has all the details of your um, special discount and everything. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so, so much. And I will see you guys next time. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Thank you so much.